Good uh, evening, everyone. Uh, like to the City of Beaumont uh, Committee of the Whole meeting for Tuesday, July 16th, 2024. Um, I would like to call the uh, call to order the meeting at I have 501 on my computer here, so we'll go with that. Um, as Deputy Mayor, I'll be uh, hosting this Committee of the Whole. Uh, as is tradition, I'd like to start off, start off the meeting with a uh, land acknowledgement. The city of Beaumont uh, respects the histories, languages, and cultures of all First Peoples of this land, whether they be of First Nation, Metis, or Inuit descent, and appreciates that their presence continues to enrich vibrant communities across the land. As we gather here in Treaty 6 territory in the homeland of the Metis Nation, we acknowledge that we are all treaty people and have ongoing responsibilities to protect and honor the treaty, the inherent rights of the people as well as the land. Uh, Madam Clerk, uh, is there any modifications to the agenda? Thank you, Chair. Yes, there is one addition to the agenda, item 7.1, Community Financial Sustainability, Sustainability Closed Session Report. Perfect, thank you. Um, could I get the committee member to uh, vote the agenda as amended? Or, pardon me, to move uh, the agenda as amended? Councillor Van Uyck. Thank you, Chair. <clears throat> I would move that the July 16th, 2024 Committee of the Whole meeting agenda be adopted with the following addition, item 7.1, Community Financial Sustainability Closed Session Report. Thank you. Perfect, thank you. I will ask that everyone vote, please. Perfect. Um, being that uh, Councillor Mockoff Swain's not here, uh, this still carries unanimous, unanimously at uh, six votes in favour. Uh, moving on to the next uh, adoption of the minutes here, I ask for a committee member to move that the minutes be accepted as presented. Go ahead, Councillor Penrod. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Natellenboss. I'll move that the June 18th, 2024 Committee of the Whole meeting minutes be adopted as presented. Perfect, I ask that everyone vote. Perfect, that carries uh, unanimously with uh, six votes in favor. Uh, presentations here, I see that uh, we do have a presentation uh, for this evening. Uh, Madam Clerk, just to confirm, that would be uh, Edmonton International Airport presentation. That is correct, and they are in attendance. Perfect, thank you. Uh, I ask that uh, the representatives come up to the front table there, and I will make sure that your mic is good to go. Actually, could I get you to do me a favor and just press the, there we go, perfect. Thank you. You should be good to go. Good evening, you hear me okay? Yep, excellent. Well, thank you, uh, Tiffany Mayor, um, appreciate it, and Council uh, and Mayor as well. Appreciate the opportunity to come and present to you today on the airport. Really a pleasure to be here in Beaumont for an update on what's going on at Edmonton Airports. Um, and our board chair, Carmen Mary, unfortunately couldn't join us today. Would have loved to have been here to, to share with you as well. Uh, joining us from the management team, uh, to my left is Margo Marin, who drives our stakeholder in government relations. 
Behind her is Peter Agno, who's our VP of, I'll call him the VP of everything. He's got a VP of a lot of different things in his title. Um, but I cannot do it in French as well. I'm not, my French isn't that good, but he's operations, infrastructure, ESG, et cetera. That does that in safety. Uh, next to him is Alex Lowe. Alex is our director of cargo and logistics, uh, among other things. And he was a Beaumont resident, resides in Beaumont. And next to him is Caitlin LaBelle, who runs my office and also resides in Beaumont. So Beaumont's a large community for us. We have a lot of people. We had a lot of people wanted to sign up to come to the council meeting. We didn't want to fill the chambers with just people that live in, uh, live and work in, uh, in Beaumont, work at the airport. But I really appreciate the time today. And we're going to run through a presentation quite quickly and give some time for, for questions. But um, on the next slide, if you can, please. Uh, um, there you go. So our board, uh, our board is a, a, uh, has a wide variety of experience on our board. Here's a, you see the pictures there. Uh, of our board members, including people that have expertise in finance and agriculture, academia, of course, aviation, indigenous relations, municipal leadership, and aviation management. And the pointies are made up of people from across the region. So our board is actually representative of the region of, across uh, the Edmonton Metro region, which is really good because that board is set with helping us drive the overarching goals and strategies of the airport, and it's a governance board, which is really important. So the role of the board of directors is to lay out our Overarching goals, vision, mission, and noble cause uh, for the organization, and to support our support us in succeeding to do that. I think we're just having a bit of technical challenges. Is there any other way to? Oh, perfect. Thank you. My apologies. Go to the next slide, please. So I'll, I'll continue our talk. Our vision is quite simple. It's about more flights to more places. What do people want when they go to an airport? They want to actually fly somewhere. And what's important is not just the fact that people need to move, the goods that move in the passenger aircraft in the belly of an airplane or the cargo flights are as or more important to the community because it allows small and medium enterprises and businesses to actually do business, whether they're importing goods to add value and manufacture or to ship out. So we have five core uh, values quite simply, and you see them on the screen there, but safety and security is our top priority. You need to operate in a safe and secure environment in the aviation industry, doing the right things right, dedicated sustainability, owning the outcome, investing in our talent. And our mission is really about driving economic prosperity. And airports in Alberta are unique in their formation and particularly in ours, where the mandate has us not only driving aviation development, but driving economic development for the regions we serve. And so our role is really to be the facilitator to drive economic value creation within the communities. On the next slide, please. So I've been with the organization now about 16 years and confident that the municipal alignment, regional alignment around municipalities in this region are, is really, really important. And we've seen that to really unlock the development of the airport. And our region's shared goals and ambitions about investments in land decision, land decisions were particularly at EMRB have really bolstered the development of the airport. And in turn, because of that pragmatic foresight, we've had an opportunity to improve our air service offerings and drive our environmental social impact. Now the pandemic obviously had a significant impact and a long lasting impact on aviation and air service offerings. But what I was really proud of is this region coming together in a way that other communities have now copied. Ottawa's copying a model like this. The Maritimes is copying a model like this where the communities all came together to raise funds for the Regional Air Service Opportunity Fund. And why that was so important is not a, we're not a natural hub. We don't have the headquarters of a, ma a major airline here. And by doing that, allowed us to unlock the, the potential for this region. It drove back air service to the point where a lot of airports that are similar size to us or below are only about 60 to 70% recovered. And we're about 92 to 95% recovered COVID. And that really is thanks to each of you and the EMRB that actually stood up to say, it's important for connectivity to our region and the airports. So that has led to about $1.5 billion of investment we've seen in the airport. We've seen a lot of investment creating jobs and the economic impact of the airport is quite substantial. So on the next slide, please, if you don't mind. Uh, overall in 2023, our passenger numbers are seven and a half million. It's about 28% increase. And if we remember back during COVID, we were closed. We had, weren't able to take any international flights. We went from 52 plus destinations to about seven or eight, but really most of that was flying into the energy camps up north and the mining camps up north and in, in the true north, north of 60. Um, and we went to our lowest point, we had 11 nonstops, but again, a lot of them were not operating frequently. And now we're more than 50. And we've actually exceeded the number of connections we had prior to COVID. From Edmonton, you can get anywhere in one stop. So connected to Atlanta, the world's largest airport, connected to Denver, the third largest airport in the U.S., connected to Minneapolis, the fifth biggest airport in the U.S., San Francisco, the sixth biggest airport in the U.S., Frankfurt, the biggest and most connected airport in Europe, Amsterdam, the second most connected airport in Europe. You can see this, the ability to get, get to and from Edmonton is, and the Edmonton metro region in Beaumont is really important. 
So economic impact for us, you can see the numbers here, $4.9 billion in 2023, about 21,000 jobs, which is substantive. If you look back where it was, we were about 2.3 billion to 2.8 billion and about 13,000 jobs. So substantive growth and more to come. Next slide, please. So uh, what are our priorities? What are we focused on? These are the five key areas we're focused on. Obviously ret retaining and growing passengers and cargo is really important. And I'll speak to cargo in a little bit. Growing our non-aeronautical revenue. Aviation is a very capital intensive business. Runways, resurfacing runway is $100 million. Calgary's redoing theirs right now for I think just about 200 million. So it's a very capital intensive business, but it's important to continue to invest in that infrastructure to ensure it drives economic development. Um, growing non-aeronautical revenue. So some of the developments you see at the airport are really important because they drive revenue that allows us to invest in aviation. So we take that revenue, we plow it all back into the airport. Uh, third is creating passenger experience. Exceptional passenger experience is really important because people have a choice where they fly. Fourth is really driving positive impact and through sustainability. We do realize aviation has an impact like every business does on, on the environment and, and on the communities we serve and focusing on all aspects of ESG is really important. And then of course, Last but not least, at least focusing on our talent. Really, aviation is a very uh, labor-intensive business and a lot of high-skilled jobs. It's really important to ensure we keep investing in talent for the future. So next slide, please, if you don't mind. So in highlights, what's, what's 20, summer highlights for this year? Of course, Condor, resuming their service into Frankfurt, really important. Uh, twice a week on the A330, it's a 45% increase in the capacity on their, that airplane and has a wide body, so it takes a lot of cargo capacity, which, again, Alex can speak to better than I can. WestJet launching daily service to Atlanta, launching service to San Francisco and Nashville as well is important. Alaska Airlines increased their service to Seattle. Again, another major hub I failed to mention earlier. It's about a 40 million passenger hub we're going. And then United on Denver. And that was really important to go double daily, but go into mainline capacity, which adds about 86% capacity. So we're still focused on additional routes, but it's also making sure these routes are successful, really important for our community. So next slide, please, if you don't mind. Oh, I missed Porter, excuse me. Porter Airlines as well launching. Uh, KLM, Port Airlines is important because it's the third carrier in Canada, third national carrier in Canada, and they have serv service daily to Ottawa, to Toronto multiple times a day, and to Montreal as well, which is really important to get out east. So next slide, my apologies. So year-round KLM, really uh, proud with KLM to be upgrading their aircraft and then actually increasing frequency in the winter. So typically airlines want to fly in the summer when everyone wants to go on vacation, but for them to increase in the winter is driven by two or three factors. One is the cargo. And the manufacturing that's happening or the agri-foods products that are here and stuff getting exported. The second was the increased demand to go into winter destinations, working collaboratively with our partners in Tourism Jasper to drive people into the mountains. And then WestJet, oh, we saw the WestJet announcement this past year. And, and Mayor, thank you for coming to that, uh, where we had the announcement of the increase of over 20% increase in their flying over winter. So you're seeing continued growth from WestJet in our, in our uh, air, airport. And of course, Air Canada, Porter, Flair, and others are expanding servers as well. Forget the next slide, if you don't mind, please. This is just a map of all the places you can fly directly through. And uh, we're continuing to continue, we're committed to continuing to develop service. And one of the things we're doing, we're talking to councils, is asking them where they're hearing from their community and their business community, where do they need to fly? It's, it, I'm not the one flying on these planes every day, otherwise I wouldn't be sitting here. I'd be on a plane, I'd be pretty jet lag, just flying back and forth. But it's really about the community and where's the community to access. And a couple of key areas we've heard from the community are Texas, to working on Texas and Eastern Seaboard, whether that be the New York, Chicago, that area, between New York, Chicago area, into it. And then international incremental services, of course, were focused on places additional in Europe, but then into Asia as well. So one of the reasons we wanted to chat with you today is about flying nonstop matters. And it really has a huge impact on the community. When people fly from Edmonton directly, if you fly, let's say I'm going Edmonton to France, you can fly Edmonton, Amsterdam, France. When you fly through another hub in Canada, that counts as a passenger going into that hub, Passenger flying out of that hub, flying back into that hub, flying back out, and you count as four passengers when you fly to one other airport instead of flying directly here. So airlines put capacity where passengers fly. So you can literally fly almost anywhere, literally on one stop from Edmonton, Atlanta being the most connected airport in the world. And again, I talked about Frankfurt earlier. We also have great connections with our partners in Toronto and Vancouver and other places as well. So really important to, when you're planning it to really look at flying nonstop whenever possible. And, car, and data is really important to us. One of the things we've been talking to councils about is you know your business community better than we ever will. And we've got members that live in this community, but we'd love to hear from your business community. Well, where are they sending product or where could they send product? We've had companies launch new markets because of air service directly. 
whether it be in the fish market, whether it be in um, agri-foods products market, whether it be in manufacturing markets, to access new markets because of roots. And so we've got a team that can help with that as well. So it's really important to, to fly that nonstop. And cargo, again, really matters. So boxes don't care how they move. But if we can intercept that box, I understand where it's going and who's moving it. It's helpful to driving for rental air service. Because on an airplane, there's three or four things that make an airplane work. The very front of the airplane, business class. Premium economy is very important to the airlines now, even more so than ever. The economy and then the cargo. And I'll tell you that some of the airlines came back after COVID, not because we had a bunch of people in the beginning front of the plane. And we had some of the economy and some of the premium economy. It was the cargo underneath that drove that plane to come back. And that creates business opportunities. If you can't get here from there, it's hard to do business. So connectivity is, is really key. So the regional air services fund I spoke about a little bit earlier on, but it has had a huge impact. And again, not getting into specifics, the $15 million create over $450 million in economic impact and create over 5,500 jobs. These aren't numbers I made up. These are numbers from independent folks who study what the route actually does and what it actually drives. So we've been working with Edmonton Global in the province to request a fund from the province where they we weren't shut, we were shut down in air service where other airports in Alberta were not, Calgary particularly, um, and is to reestablish the air services fund for us for the next five years to go after that next incremental growth in air service. And we don't invest in service that doesn't make sense. The services have to make sense once any kind of subsidy subsides. The idea with the, the incentive is to help them offset the startup costs. So when we're competing for airlines, it's not that we're competing between a flight from Vancouver to Toronto or Vancouver to uh, London. We're competing with that plane that can go from Delhi to London. So the markets we're competing on, because the airplane is a very mobile asset and it's high cap and intensive, is not a market necessarily that's in Canada. It's a market internationally, and that's what we have to compete against. So give an idea, you can see the bottom of this, how, the boost in GDP, what this actually does by, by having this air service in the community. It's a hugely impactful. So again, I can't thank you enough for all your support. So next slide, please. I'll talk about cargo in a minute. So air cargo tonnage was down in 2023. I guess, you know, a big chunk of that. And we're glad that we all got back out of our houses and we stopped ordering 15 Amazon boxes outside of our front door every day. Um, and we could actually go back and support our local retailers or our local food and beverage operators and go back to restaurants. Um, and I love not being able to cook all the time anymore <laughs> at home. But uh, cargo is hugely important. This is a list of the cargo carriers here. And I'm just going to focus on one for a moment on Buffalo Airways. And Alex really worked on this to secure their 737 freighter. And for those that know Buffalo, dating back to Buffalo, Joe had his own television show up in the north, uh, the pilots up north. Um, and it's really about opening up the north. And this is really critical because getting goods into the north and getting goods out of the north is important to feed into international flights. So Buffalo Airways is then connecting into a bunch of the different carriers here. WestJet's connecting to Buffalo Airways to feed the north. So it's really important to have not just the big international carriers we hear like DHL and FedEx, et cetera, but to have the, the uh, interim regional carriers to provide access. And that's lowering food costs in the north, but also bringing goods down to get international markets. So our cargo tonnage was down, but global cargo tonnage was down as well. We're starting to see a, an uptake in cargo again. So next slide, please. So International Cargo Hub, what's the next big development that's happening? So 65th Avenue, which you've all heard about, is being developed along Highway 2. Uh, that is a, a project that was underway under uh, consideration by Leduc City and Leduc County ourselves for quite some time, really driven by Leduc City and ourselves is now under construction. And what that will do is open up 2,000 acres of land. Can you give me an idea what that, that 2,000 acres will be? Yeah, at full build out, it's about 60 million square feet of warehouse. It's about 20 plus thousand jobs. It's about $5 billion in development. It is substantive opportunity for our region to drive economic development through air, air connectivity for cargo and logistics. And that has spill off effects. A lot of it's going to end up at the airport, but not all of it's going to end there. A lot of it's going to end up in the community. And not everything that comes by cargo moves by an airplane. A lot of it goes by rail, it goes by road, and it goes by ship to Prince Rupert. So we received a grant from the federal government. We still don't have the paperwork finished. We're close for $100 million. And the first phase is about a $400 million build out. Uh, interchange obviously opens it up. And the first large tenant in there will be our airport city solar, which will still have a couple more little permit things to do, which will have a 120 megawatt solar farm. Basically, it could power almost the city of Leduc by itself. It won't. It'll go back into the grid, but it's an example of, of being able to do energy. And we just completed about $36 million of logistics improvements on the other side of the runway, the existing side of the runway. This is against the city of Leduc to your left and Leduc County to the west. It's looking east to west here. 
Um, and we're basically sitting over top of the Safeway if you're in Leduc right now. That's kind of where we're sitting looking in this direction. It gives you a sample of how large this, this development will actually be. And of course, we're really proud of that. Edward City Solar being our first partner in there. So next slide, please, if you don't mind. So sustainability is really important. I was talking to your safety codes uh, a supervisor outside who's in the hydrogen car, which I get the pleasure of driving every day when I'm here in Edmonton. Um, and really important that we believe airports can be a place to, to drive systemic change and drive environmental benefit in a socially and uh, uh, fiscally responsible way. And so the proud to partner with Toyota on the first uh, launch of their fleet, the large, it'll be the largest fleet in Canada for hydrogen uh, fuel cell vehicles. I'd love to invite you guys to come out and drive them. If you haven't had a chance, please do. We'll be happy to host you out at the airport to take a, take a tour of them. Uh, great vehicles. So that that's launched. Um, we completed two memorandums of understanding on sustainable aviation fuel. And this is really important because the airlines, very hard to decarbonize business for the, for the airplane component. And sustainable aviation fuel is going to be one of the major ways to do that besides hydrogen air flights, which will happen about 2040 and beyond. Also working collaboratively with our First Nations, Montana First Nation, really proud of working with them. And we're actually using, uh, working collaboratively with the partners, Drone Delivery Canada is one of our partners, um, and uh, Zing Final Mile, Apple Logistics, and Air Canada. And we're using uh, Drone Delivery Canada's equipment to fly drones between the airport and their Indigenous Medical Center. So it's pretty neat to see the innovation that's happening to be able to drive that and work collaboratively with our First Nations partners. And at COP28, we were able to partner with Transport Canada to sign a green shipping quarters, which includes the whole Edmonton Rector region, which is the airport was the one representing it because we're the air component of it. But it's actually Dubai, Japan, Korea, uh, UAE, CN Rail, Port-au-Prince Rupert, and this Edmonton Rector region to drive uh, sustainable transportation logistics going forward. So really, really important uh, to do that. Next slide, please. So passenger experience is really important to us, of course, and you're seeing a big, you'll see a big focus for us on the passenger experience. Um, we have, thank you for your patience when you're coming to the airport, the roadway's been dug up. We're basically rebuilding a high level bridge while people are walking underneath it. Um, we're proud to say that it's a trick or treat, but it's not a trick, it's a treat. On October 31st, we'll reopen up that road. We're um, quite a bit ahead of schedule. Not good, with Peter, right? Is that yeah. Okay, good, okay. <laughs> Okay, yeah, we're quite a bit ahead of schedule and we'll have that real open. You'll still see initial works happening next year because we're not building it back exactly the way it was. We're building it back in a different way and more an improved way and creating a landscape that is the Edmonton metro region. So you'll see a river valley theme along that uh, roadway, which will take another six to eight months to build. You can't really plant trees in the winter. It won't really work for them to survive, but and get the art pieces, etc. And so really important. And Peter leads our infrastructure team, and he's new to the new to the team in, in his role, but he's been with us for six years. Um, and it's really important because there's a lot of construction. So this year, give or take, we're doing $150 million of capital in the airport. So I mean, capital intensive, it's highly capital intensive. And a lot of it is things that people don't see. HVAC, mechanical, electrical, sewage, you guys understand in the municipalities. And then the concrete apron you, those airplanes park on is extremely expensive. I'd rather build a lot more roads Unless apron, but uh, we have no choice but to replace it. So next slide, please. So I talked about this a little bit. I won't spend a lot of time, but really excited about this partnership. And Drone Delivery Canada is a uh, partnership between Drone Delivery Canada and another company that they've, they've joined, joined forces with. But this is the future of logistics for ABA for not only movement of goods, but people. So in the Paris this year at the Olympics, you're going to actually be able to fly in an autonomous vertical and takeoff landing drone between the vertiport port that's built in the river and a Paris uh, Olympic site and two other destinations. And the future of this is actually coming. And so when we started this program of flying drones about seven years ago now, uh, around wildlife control first and then into this, is really about creating the pathways for that to occur. Now, again, we believe in safety and security first. We'll do it in the right, right order, right time. But that this is actually creating the pathway for autonomous and onward piloted takeoff and landing vehicles, vertical takeoff and landing vehicles. Next slide, please. So Villeneuve is very important as well. Generation, very important. We have two airports in this region that we operate. Villeneuve out in, uh, out in um, Sturgeon County and uh, directly west of St. Albert. Um, has, it's a very busy airport, a lot of flight training there. We're blessed that it has two runways and a control tower, as well as fully instrument landing systems. And there's, you can see the number of tenants, et cetera, there. There's expansion happening at Villeneuve as well, and it has its own strategic plan. We're really focused on general aviation, alternative space for air ambulance, flight training, aviation, aircraft maintenance, and drone innovation and development. One of those companies I'll talk about briefly is a company called Pegasus, 
or they've actually invented something that now Boeing is going to announce that they're taking into their system and putting into aircraft. It was developed here in Alberta. And that technology is going to go into a commercial aircraft, but it's coming from drones to commercial aircraft. And that company is heavily involved with the Alberta government in firefighting. So they do far long distance drones to watch for fires and predict firefighting, predict fires where they're going to break out. So it's quite interesting to see how this all, all fits together in the ecosystem. So next slide, if you don't mind, please. So being good neighbors, I mean, we'll, we'll talk about this, we really pride ourselves on working collaboratively together. And noise, of course, we understand is an issue. Anytime there's an airport, uh, airports are great neighbors, they drive jobs, airports create noise, or the, the airplanes that fly create noise. And so it's important to understand how do we become, what's the best way for us to partner together in the neighborhoods and really appreciate the relationship with the city of Beaumont. We do have a noise advisory committee. It's a very robust noise advisory committee. Really appreciate that Matthew is on that committee and Glenn Finstad is the, is the chair. He's the city of Leduc uh, councillor, is the chair of that. Um, but the committee looks at the flight paths and I, I'm not the expert in this, Peter can speak this better for his questions. Uh, flight paths and trends and makes reasonable recommendations. We don't control where the plane flies in the sky. That's NAV Canada and Transport Canada. And they follow, fly based on wind, right? Air, airplanes actually physically need to fly into the wind and, and like they need to land into the wind typically. So we have two runways and Peter can speak to that a little bit more about it with the distribution of flights, but uh, aviation does have some ability to move things, but not drastically move them. So uh, we are rec we are uh, aware of the impacts that noise does have on communities and people sitting in their backyards. I live in the Duke. I live right underneath the flight path. So I know I see the planes going over the top of my head, but it is something for us to be to be cognizant of something that we're happy to chat about as well. So next slide, if you don't mind, please. So aircraft noise, a variety of reasons why flights pass over Beaumont. I talked about winds and weather um, and conditions may, landing conditions affect where planes land. So there's a physical way that planes have to land based on the, air, the actual winds, et cetera, because they have to land, typically land take, especially taking off, you need to take off into the wind. I'm not a pilot, Caitlin is, and she can tell me better than I can why it's important because of physics. Um, of course, also maintenance. So when we have a runway shut down, we're doing, for example, last couple of years, we have to end something called runway end safety areas. They're called RESAs. Due to the plane overshooting the runway in Toronto, all the airplane airports had to go add this new area at the end of runways. And that shuts down runways where we work on it because you can't land. So there's things you do when you're doing runway maintenance is that you can't land on. And of course, balancing the use of the runways as well, which we do. Uh, we're happy to talk to you more about this and engage with it. We do have uh, noise procedures on the airport website. Um, and we do, Peter does lead our noise, lead our, our community with noise advisory committees chaired by Glenn Finstad, Councilor Finstad, but happy to discuss further and happy to sit down with anybody that has noise comments. We do this out at Villeneuve as well. The communities around there, whether it be out in St. Albert or in, in, in different communities, we do that in Leduc County in the city of Leduc. Happy to do that in Bowen. We do have done it in Devon and I've sat in church basements and uh, had coffee with folks and I've sat in uh, people's kitchens and had a cup of coffee and talked about, about aircraft. But it, we do understand it does have an impact. Next slide, please, if you don't mind. So for us, like how do we, you know, what's our call to action for lack of a better term? It's we want to work with you regionally and understand you are in your community every day. You hear from your residents every day. You know what's important to your businesses every day. So how do we work together? How can we grow things like transit, utilities and infrastructure where it makes sense to work together? Your, expo your exporters in your communities, you know better than we do. They know where they need to send goods. We might be able to assist to say, hey, do you think about going to this market? We have a service here. We can connect you with someone. So, you know, please want to want to help. We're asking entrepreneurs to think bigger. And this actually came from one of our communities we went to where the, the individuals decided to export goods to uh, Europe because of the KLM flight. But they were never looking at Europe as a market in the past. And they did so because they have connectivity. And we were able to connect them on the other end through our relationships that Alex has with people, businesses on that end. And tell policymakers the air service to and from Edmonton matters and to Bowman residents that matters. So we're talking to the province and we're talking to the federal government. Why is it important for you to have connectivity to your community? Because it really is not my airport. It's the community airport or community asset. So next slide, I think is the end. So community impact. Um, we've got one more after this. Community impact is really important to us. We have the, the charity golf classic. We've, we've raised about $1.3 million. We do hundreds of community events a year, uh, sponsoring different tournaments, sponsoring different community events, arts festivals, jazz festival, been out here for, um, but we want, we're proud to support Mayor Bill's golf tournament as well, but how can we work with your community better? So we don't know the community like you do. What's important to you in your community that you're hearing from? And let us know. We want to hear from you and Margo works with our community investment team to make sure we make investments in the right place. So then last slide, if I remember correctly. 
just a, this is it. So thank you and question slide. So I just wanna thank you for your time today and really appreciate the opportunity to present. Um, we really are a community asset and we wanna be great partners. So if there are things we can do, we're not gonna be perfect at everything, no one ever is. We're not saying we are, we'd like to hear from you where we can do things better or where there are opportunities to work more collaboratively together. So with that, I will pass back to Deputy Mayor. Thank you. Perfect. Uh, thank you so much for the presentation. Really appreciate all the information. Um, I know for myself, it's it's quite a bit to consume, even reading it beforehand here. But uh, I will pass it on to uh, other council members to see if there's any questions or, or comments or inquiries in re for our presenters. Perfect. Uh, I'll start with uh, Councillor uh, Van Newark. Hello. Yeah, thanks for coming tonight and uh, <clears throat> providing a whole bunch of stats and numbers. I tried to jot some down and then, um, you know, stopped because there were so many there. But uh, I think one of the things that residents of a community like Beaumont overlook is the value of cargo to the airport. Um, and you made an important statement that basically said, you know, the air, air, airplanes are back in the way and numbers that they are, but, you know, initially because of cargo and secondarily because of people. So just a, a comment that that's an interesting aspect. Um, when it comes to trips, flying, vacations, and all those things, I don't think you hear the anecdotals around all the ones that went well. <laughs> I think you hear the ones that didn't go well. And there's been a whole bunch of that lately. Um, but one, one of the things that I think continues to plague our airport and our region is, you know, you, you, you guys are sitting here as the, the service provider, EIA, right? And we have the planes coming and going as carriers. And I think, I think there's quite a bit of work to do on carrier trust. And why I say that is because we still have residents from this community that drive to Calgary to fly away on a vacation. And um, it happens more than you think. And that extra cost, time and effort is worth the certainty for those families. Um, and, and, you know, I, I don't know if you guys hear that, but I know I do when we talk in the community around the soccer fields and around the hockey rinks and as people are going and, you know, it's not worth my time to book Edmonton to Calgary because of if it's not on time or if they lose my luggage and it's a horrible way to start a vacation. So I'm just biting the bullet, flying to Calgary, or driving to Calgary, grabbing a hotel, parking there, doing that. So I don't know what you need to do to talk to the carriers about that, but you know, I'm sure they know it's, it, it's real. And the carrier trust continues on through the whole communication process with the carriers. Um, you know, when there's major disruptions, the lines are full, you can't talk to anyone. They direct you to an app. Uh, you know, there are secondary providers of service at other airports that connect. There's a plethora of issues that unfortunately get funneled into the EIA YEG brand, uh, you know, fair or unfair. So probably not telling you something you don't know, but really wanted to make sure that I brought those couple of comments forward. I don't know if you guys uh, are able to speak to that a little bit, that, that carrier trust and how that's going to be, you know, continually worked on and communication rebuilt and stuff. Thanks for that. Thanks for the both comments. Uh, the cargo is, I appreciate that one notice about cargo, cargo being so important. It, it does make a big difference. It's, uh, there's one carrier in the US, the primary line I know of, that actually takes the number of the amount of cargo they have on the bottom and they equate it and they add a sticker on the airplane saying this cargo adds to 14 business class passengers. So it literally does make a difference and it's really important, but it also has an exponential impact on our economy because it creates more jobs here locally, whether you're bringing goods in to add value to them and ship them out or you're manufacturing an agri food here adding value to it and shipping it to another market. So really, really important. Um, on the airline side, so do appreciate that people still do drive. And we also have people drive the other way up to Edmonton to, to catch flights less than, than, than we'd like. We'd like more of them to do that, but we'd like the community in, Edmonton, in the Edmonton metro region of Beaumont to stay here. And I think a twofold, I'll say, I'll talk to Kira Trust second. The first is that in the past, we haven't had, always haven't ha had the flights to a lot of these destinations. But I'll give you an example where I was talking to someone this last week where they're flying and their first thing was, I got to fly here to there and connect. I'm like, well, you can go Edmonton, Amsterdam, Paris. I never even thought about that. I'm like, thought I have to connect in Canada. I can connect on the other end just as easily once you're in Europe. It's all one country. 
the way it works. Basically, it's a Schengen country. There's no customs, nothing. Once you're in, you're in. And so it's it's educating people that that opportunity exists. And of the flights we have, we didn't have Atlanta. We didn't have Minneapolis. We didn't have these hubs to fly into. We didn't have Frankfurt. Um, we always had Toronto and Vancouver and Montreal, et cetera, but didn't have those. So I think that's one important. As far as carrier trust, I, I, it hasn't helped that there's been a lot of disruption in the aviation industry. Um, and, and some most recently with just uh, with, with some labor unrest. Um, so what we've done on the airport side, and we still will do better, is we want to hear. We want to hear good, bad, and, and ugly, because then how do we help communicate that to the airlines? So I will say in WestJet, for example, uh, Alexis from WestJet was up here. Again, appreciate uh, Mayor Danlock and others coming out. And listen to the community. Heard directly from the community. What do they need to do? And they've doubled down on capacity increases in Edmonton. So that, that line of flight is WestJet. The Minneapolis flight is WestJet. The San Francisco flight is WestJet. National flight is WestJet. So we're seeing that growth from them. We just now need people to use it. So it's how do we communicate that? So when you're at the soccer fields, we're also looking for how do we best communicate with your community? Is it the Beaumont Soccer Association? Is it the, I don't know what it is, but let us know. Because we've got a whole team that will come into the community and activate, sponsor some events and educate people on what we have. Because otherwise, how do you know otherwise? So appreciate the comments. Yeah. Um, second question, just, uh, and you touched on it and you had a slide on it. Uh, every once in a while, we do get feedback uh, directly to the council through the mayor around noise. Just wondering if you can speak more to what that process looks like. Uh, you know, what what is the leveling of engagement available? Uh, you know, personally, it's no surprise to me that there's airport noise, airport noise in Beaumont. I'm pretty geographically astute when I when I made my purchase in Beaumont, but um, you know, it it is bothersome to some people sometimes and what is the best way for them to uh, bring that forward sure i'm going to ask peter to come up if that's okay i'll just let him take my chair yeah. for a second to talk about airport noise. oh here we go. sorry thank you so thank you and great question so um for anyone that does have feedback on on noise there is a, an address i'll, I'll right. just interrupt do you mind just speaking into the oh, mic yeah. a bit? sorry Thanks so much thank you and a great question so anyone that does have feedback on noise there is an email address on our website that once they email us we will engage with them within 24 to 48 hours we will review um, and try and get as much data from them as possible and then provide context back on, on why that aircraft flew that path as myron has alluded to a lot of it is very weather dependent uh, so there, there might be no choice based on the way the wind is blowing or the conditions on the fog conditions are that will actually bring the aircraft into that landing route. If it is all, a, all that is equal, the NAV Canada does make a concerted effort to divide up and make sure that the runways are well balanced when it comes to um, aircraft landing. But we will always engage with folks and we, we're more than happy to go out and sit in person and show the data around what's the policies, what's the procedures. Our approach is once again to be very personable, and um, the data and the context behind why this, what, what's the, what goes into deciding on what runway is used is really important, and it's very helpful for folks to understand that. Not everyone will agree with it, but we're more than happy to engage. And so, if anyone is a repeat um, caller, so to speak, we're, we will go out, we will meet with them, we'll have a cup of coffee, and uh, we'll bring the representative from the Nice Committee with us. And we'll try and work together to come up with a solution or at least provide the context behind what, what's happening and why it's happening. Yeah, thank you. And I think the, the commitment to that follow through is the big piece that the, the residents will will look for. So I'm I, and I'm sure that you guys are there. So appreciate the uh, the comments. Yeah, we will always follow up on any any uh, any feedback that we get from Nye's perspective. Yeah, thank you very much. Perfect. Uh, thank you, Councillor Van Newark. Uh, moving down the list here, uh, Councillor Munkoff Swain. Thank you very much, and apologies for being a little bit late. Great, great presentation. A couple of things here. Um, first, on, on the departures lane, um, when, when I saw an article about a month ago, I said you guys were uh, ahead of schedule. I had to double take. I've never seen anything um, go like that. So good work on that. That's Peter. <laughs> right? As someone who flies about eight to 10 times a month out of there, it is appreciated. Looking forward to that. Um, we have a lot of residents who work uh, at the airport, uh, as you're aware, right? A lot of air traffic controllers here. Um, and uh, as you look to expand out and so um, you talk about, you know, what 65th Ave is going to do, everything like that. I'll get into that in a second. But um, the valley is not lost on residents here. Uh, I think there is opportunities for us to drive in there, and I'll, I'll touch on that. Um, 
when we talk about value, like whenever I'm talking anywhere, first thing that comes out of my mouth is fifth fastest growing community in Canada. Second thing is 10 minutes from the airport, right? And, and that drives home. And I know when our ECDEV are, are trying to push that as well. And so you, you touched on it really well about just um, how, how linked the, the two um, uh, stakeholders, Beaumont and the airport are. So having this in front of us is, is really uh, helpful and, and just, um, the information helps us drive some of those those economic development conversations for sure. Um, you spoke a bit about um, the uh, I'm gonna, the acronym I'm going to get wrong. So the, the Regional Air Service Opportunities Fund. I remember I was dialing in on Zoom, right? And and the, hey, you got to we've got to make this commitment to the airport, right? It came up very last minute, uh, and we're all looking at this like, where does this come from? Um, and you know, at the at the time, we we made the commitment. We got quite a bit of grief uh, on that from, from, you know, obviously we're in the middle of a pandemic, everyone, like we're trying to cut costs as much as possible. Uh, and here we go investing in the airport. People didn't quite get that connection. Um, you know, that, that vote went seven nothing that day. And, um, you know, it, you could see anecdotally how this helped, right? And so it's really good to see the information here back in front of us um, to, to, to reinforce that message. And I remember Steve and I were talking through that, like it, and the, it wasn't a question whether we did it or not. It was more about how do we justify the value back into it, right? We knew it was the right thing because we had the information, right? Um, but it's really, really great to see here um, what, what that actually has done and just seeing the, the growth and the turnaround that you guys have been able to achieve. Um, and so, yeah, really helpful to have that information. Um, so thank you for that. Uh, on, on that slide, there's one piece I had a question on. It talks about Edmonton Global's commitment, uh, sorry, requesting from the province and the feds to get $10 million dollars for the next five years. And then it follows up and says a $50 million commitment to, to that um, RASOF is gonna ensure long-term sustainability, blah, blah, blah. So they're asking for 10 million from the feds. Where does that where does that other 40 million come from? Yeah, sorry, great question. I'll just back up a little bit and thank you for the comments. Um, I wanted to say to your to council, your, your administration's been hugely helpful for us. So, and where we can help you drive economic development, rising tide rises all boats. I'm gonna use a boat analogy instead of an airplane because then we talk about wind and no one likes wind, but uh, to raise airplanes, but um, it's hugely important. Mike and the team have been great here for us to work with. So I wanted to make sure I, I, I mentioned that. What we've gone to the province with and particularly the premier asked us and other uh, ministers, what do you need to drive air service connectivity in Edmonton? And we said, well, in a, in a location where you have a he airline headquartered, they just add flights. Sure. They're not going to your. So we said to the province, if you really want to supercharge this region, the some kind of funding between yourselves, the province, and the feds of $50 million, $10 million a year for five years oh, to actually drive that. And it's not just passengers, it's also driving cargo connectivity. And it's really important. So that's where the funding would come from, is the province and the federal government. So we've targeted. Now, whether that's going to happen or not, I don't know. Uh, we are right now working with, um, through Edmonton Global and the uh, province to find a local uh, ministerial champion on the uh, provincial side to actually take this as one of the initiatives. So we had been having meetings with different uh, ministers. Okay. So annual $10 million renewal com commitment effectively. Um, and and tr you try to get the province and the feds to, to play together. So good luck with that. <laughs> um, about an ask, right. And maybe there's not more of a direct ask, but you talk about um, ships uh, rising, all that sort of stuff. For me, um, you know, we had to make a really tough decision a while back on our transit when we're looking to expand our transit. Um, and, you know, in front of us were options to increase our service to get into Edmonton. And what we really wanted to do was to be able to provide that service out to the airport, not only for people to, for traveling for work and vacation to actually catch the airlines, but uh, the amount of people that A, work here already, but B, want to move here uh, and, and get the job. So you talk about all this additional warehouse space, that those people are going to need to come from somewhere. Mm -hmm we had to make the tough decision because it was just too expensive for us to um, to add that extra loop. Like we would love to have transit from here out to, uh, towards the airport. I don't know what that looks like, um, but when, when you're talking about trying to attract investment, right? Yes, you've got that option, you know, and, and, and the bus system coming and connecting Edmonton and, and Leduc, um, but we're also a, a critical hub here of, of where you're going to, where these uh, workers are going to be housed, right? And right now they can't catch a bus to get there. And obviously, as you know, that, that's a challenge. So um, I, I just leave that with you as we would desperately want to figure out a way to, to help support uh, current residents and future residents to attract them to come and work in that, in that regional airport. Um, and so if, if there's, 
I'll just keep that keep that front of mind, uh, if, if you don't mind, as we go through uh, through this. I, I don't know what that looks like, um, but but I when you talk about how can we work together, um, for me that that's the the best path is to help us figure out a way to get that transit going, and and you'll see a lot more um, attraction in this area that will then lead into to workers into your area. So. Um, that, that's all I had. Great presentation. Really appreciate the follow up on the numbers, particularly around that um, that air service opportunities fund. Uh, it's very helpful. Um, and uh, yeah, thanks for coming in tonight. I appreciate that. And on the transit side, uh, we are um, we'd love to have Beaumont connected to the airport. We have a, we have a lot of people just in our own team of 300 that live in Beaumont, but I know tons of people that live in Beaumont. They're air traffic controllers. They're pilots flight attendants to work in cargo, ground handling, whatever, they name the enterprise. It's also a great way for students to get, you know, working at the outlet mall for jobs, for example, a place to start to get into their, their first job uh, activity. Um, and aviation is going to need tons of people. So it's a very important industry. Um, we are working right now with uh, the city of Edmonton, um, the province and Leduc County on connectivity from the new uh, Heritage Valley, the extension that's being built with the Heritage Valley as part of the rail plan and what that looks like to bring rail out to the airport, to connect the airport to the city and then creating kind of a terminus there. And that's something we'd love to talk to you guys about once, as that's get going connectivity from, we're talking with Devon, for example, connectivity from Devon there and, and from the Duke city, the Duke County and uh, Beaumont being really important because you are the fastest, the fastest growing. You guys have a great community to live in as well. And so we'd love to be able to work together with the team to understand what, what, are, what are the best options to do that. It might be in the short term, might be just even a, I don't know, a, a ride sharing program. I don't know what the, the solutions are, but they're going you know, to crawl, walk, run. Perfect. Uh, <clears throat> thank you, Councillor Makoff Swain. Uh, Councillor McCook. Thank you, Deputy Mayor, and thank you for coming in, everyone, and for the presentation. Um, I had the privilege of joining one of the tours you folks do, and it was a great opportunity to see not just you know the core part of the airport, but um, all, all the stuff that you guys do all across um, the land of the airport. Um, and it just goes beyond the planes flying in and out. So it was very interesting, highly recommended to my colleagues if you guys haven't done it. Um, and it's clear there's a strong economic driver anchored with the airport um, and all the info you provided definitely helps us with the conversations that we have with our residents. Um, my colleague kicked off the, the uh, transit discussion, so I was happy to see that. Um, obviously, it would be great to have some deeper conversations surrounding that and improving the connectivity between um, Beaumont. I worked at the airport for many years when I was a student, so it was definitely beneficial. I obviously drove, but um, if there was some sort of transit, that would have been uh, helpful at that time. But um, just a couple questions. Um, I appreciate your openness to kind of hear from us and um, how we can better collaborate. In your view, kind of what ways do you see Beaumont as a strategic partner for EIA? Yeah, great question. I'm going to start and then open up to any of my, my colleagues that uh, obviously the um, success of the airport is based on the success of the communities around it. It's, it's mutual beneficial or symbiotic in that way. So um, people need to we're not having, we don't have residents at the airport. Um, so residential needs to be a huge component, but also businesses. Mm -hmm. And so businesses choose to where, go where they choose to go. But being able to tie collaborative together, Mayor and I have talked about this in the past, and Mike and I have about economic development. When you're working on an economic development initiative, let us know we can help. If we can be the, you know, the person to come in and say, yeah, you should go to Beaumont, if it helps you in some way, we're happy to do that. Because at the end of the day, again, we'll use the vote analogy again, it all helps us. We're rising tide rails the votes. We don't care where it ends up as long as it ends up in this region. Mm -hmm. And so if there's opportunities to, to do that, I think it's beneficial. I think the other high level one is if there's things you're working on and we can work collaboratively together with to educate government, all levels of government, particularly provincial and federal, of what that actually means. Most, most uh, I would assume most politicians think the fastest growing areas in our province and in our country aren't here, right? And so how do we help? What are the key messages you're trying to deliver? working with our team and with Marco to make sure we are, we're in lockstep of what you're trying to achieve. So when you have your next strategic plan, your economic development plans, how do we help tie into that? And I think that's where we can provide benefits. We've been able to do that with the city of Edmonton and their, and their plans, Leduc County, City of Leduc, started to have a conversation with Devon earlier this year. I'd love to have that conversation with Beaumont as well. Where can we actually 
you know, collaborate and work better together. And especially when you're directing on your things like innovation. So we brought some companies that we're working with to say, hey, you, you know, good place for you to be in, be in Beaumont. We can't do it at the airport, but maybe it's a good place to be in Beaumont. Mm -hmm. Particularly as you look at this clean energy work that Peter's leading um, and autonomous systems. And what you guys are doing here in Europe for what, I, what we know what's public is pretty impressive. And so how can we help you with that? I'm sure there's more than that, of course, mm -hmm. getting into your community, getting your businesses, mm -hmm. but I think high level, those are probably a couple of key ones. Yeah, no, that's perfect. That's great to hear. And I think it's beneficial and great to hear that the the positive working relationship that you have with our administration as well, to be able to have those conversations and bring you guys in. But I also like hearing um, to have you guys come to potentially strategic planning and stuff like that. And um, just to better connect and get some of those key messaging points. And I think that'll be important because sometimes, you know, we're here and we are able to go have those conversations and stuff, but it's, you know, we don't always know what we don't know. Right. So it's good to, to be able to have more of that information, to be able to bring that forward and really drive some of those key messages. So appreciate that um, leading into that a little bit, I guess. So how can um, Beaumont businesses and residents kind of take better advantage of opportunities arising from the airport's kind of presence and their growth? You touched on cargo and various needs and how we can connect our business community with opportunities. Um, is it through our economic development department through you guys or what's kind of the best way? Yes, yeah, it's, it's a great question. I don't have the only answer, but I'll think one answer would be through economic development with, with your EDO and through with, with the, the team and Mike. Uh, is, is one. We are always looking for products to be able to sell, things to be able to showcase, um, partners to be able to work with, companies to be able to work with. We don't know what we don't know. And so we we love to hear from people. And really, we're, we're pretty open. We're pretty accessible on, on, the, on, the, on the web, Peter and myself, but Margo leads our, our, our team. We have a whole community, community team as well. Um, and Alex is our cargo. I didn't think it was cargo. He know, I don't know cargo. He knows cargo. I just show up with Amazon boxes on my house, <laughs> on my front door. But um, so I think anything, any of those points are, are a good way to do it. Yep. At the end of the day, we're always looking at how do we showcase local? Mm -hmm. How do we showcase what's here? Mm -hmm. well, I'd love to have a Chartier restaurant in the airport. I know that's not necessarily the cards right now, but I'd love to have that restaurant in the airport, right? Mm -hmm. So, but maybe there's products in there. So we're always looking at different ways to showcase what is, what is this region doing. Perfect. That's great. I really appreciate that and appreciate um, your openness as well to, to constantly be communicating and figuring out ways that we can um, better collaborate. I think even regarding the communication, um, you talked about being at the mayor's event, which is great. I think also another great opportunity is our Beaumont Days. Um, just chatting with our events team and being able to be at uh, Beaumont Days. We have a ton of residents and surrounding area people that come in through there. So having um, you guys available at that, I think would be a great opportunity to kind of hear from residents and um, kind of be able to show off what EIA does as well, aside from just the planes flying in and out and really showcasing that economic driver piece. So I appreciate that and thank you so much. Appreciate that comment. Actually, I, I think Caitlin sent me a nice picture of her and her son and her husband at Beaumont Days <laughs> yeah. at, the, at the parade. So I think with the mayor and other council members. So thank you, <laughs> thank you for that. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor uh, McCook. Uh, moving on next to the list is uh, Mayor Danilo. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Appreciate it. Great presentation. Um, I'll be brief in my comments. I mean, I'm I'm thrilled at how the airport has uh, resurged from the COVID uh, of a few years ago, where the routes had gone down, as you mentioned. Our routes are now getting higher, and getting direct routes anywhere around the world is getting very much more uh, accessible, which is hugely important. People don't realize how important the airport is to us, and how lucky we are to be so close to the airport for economic development and, of course, our residents living there and working there and so on. So I'm thrilled how much you have on your leadership, Myron. Um, the airport has really rebounded back after the COVID situation, and our airport is actually one of the leading airports in the world for innovation. You just discussed some of it today, too. So looking forward to future opportunities to work with you guys, uh, especially about transit, too. Um, we, we were looking at getting transit to the airport, but cost-wise, we, we had to get our initial service up and running. It's becoming very effective and getting good results, so a chance to move to the airport down the road is, is, is feasible. Uh, how soon? Don't know, but it's a, it's a good possibility. So that would be beneficial for all kinds of people. So looking forward to that down the road. Thank you for coming in. Great presentation. Good information. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, we'll move on to uh, Councillor Penrod. Thank you, Chair. And I'll just echo a great presentation. A few of my questions and comments have already been addressed, so I'll just uh, stick to the one that 
uh, hasn't been that really interests me. Uh, 112 megawatt airport city solar. Uh, I'm glad you gave the, it's hard to wrap our mind around the amount of power that that's generating. So I'm glad you gave the example that that could meet the power needs of our, our sister city, Lidu. Um, what an impact that will make on the region, I would imagine. So I'm curious uh, just to hear what the expected build out on that is to start. And then beyond that, um, what are your procurement policies through EIA that drive um, increased investment and development in the region? Uh, how, how much of that work is coming from local uh, electricians and how much capacity is being built in the region with a project like that? Yeah, maybe I'll start and I'll get Peter to add in. Um, I'll, I'll maybe talk about procurement generally first. So we, we um, try wherever possible to work with local centers. Like we're not building airport city solar farm. It's being built by a partner of ours. Mm -hmm. We don't have the financial wherewithal, nor do we know how to operate a 112 megawatt solar farm. It's not in our, our, our regular business line. Um, but we did partner with a company out of, out of Europe. From a construction timeline perspective, we still have a couple more permitting things to go through. I think you can imagine a solar farm that large had a lot of, a lot of permitting, permitting uh, requirements, and we were um, caught up a little bit in that moratorium. Yeah, Reg, that came out, and we were able to get uh, out of that in April. Now, a couple more things left. Uh, Construction-wise, that's about a two-plus year construction window, two-year period construction window, two two and a half years. Um, from an airport perspective, we uh, try to buy wherever possible from local. And uh, we have partnerships with, we're proud that we're the first airport to have the Canadian Council Aboriginal Business Certification to actually work with Aboriginal business, for example, to bring in Indigenous, Métis and Inuit businesses to work at the airport and where, wherever possible. So we're always looking for companies and opportunities to work collaborate together. What we would love from you is who are the companies that can do stuff with us? And we are really, we are like a municipality. Uh, we don't have elections. Um, but our board votes us in and out. <laughs> we serve with their pleasure of the board, but um, is to, you know, we operate on water utility, on gas utility, power. Uh, we have all the, every, everything we have in a municipality we have. And so how do we, how do we um, integrate with businesses that you have in your community is really just finding who the businesses are. And typically we get approached by either someone through a council member or through administration or EDO says, Hey, I've got this company. Did you know they're here? And no, we didn't know. So that we really be open to that. Our purchasing, we've got a great purchasing team and I'll add Peter, Peter does most of the stuff that goes to contracts. So you can speak to better sure. than I can. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yes, for sure. So we run a, an RFP process um, for any of the big projects that go out to tender. And uh, through that process is always looked upon where, where are the folks coming from to build this? Do they have the skills? Do they have the knowledge? And um, I'm, I'm very grateful to say that a lot, the vast majority of the contracts that are awarded they're all local supported contracts, like uh, be it millwrights, electricians, plumbers, concrete. Um, those folks work in your community, they work in Duke, they work in Edmonton. So although you have the big organizations like PCL and Lafarge coming in to do it, their resources are living in your communities and the skill sets, we don't need to look beyond um, Edmonton and the, the metropolitan region of Edmonton because our skill, the skill sets are already here that we need to do what we need to do. Perfect. Uh, thank you, Councillor Penrod. Uh, moving on to Councillor Barnard. Thank you very much, uh, Deputy Mayor. And thank you. It's been said over and over, so thank you very much. Uh, I'll add my, um, my appreciation to everything that you're doing. I don't know if any of my other colleagues have never asked them, but I have landed a plane at EIA on wow. one of your runways. 20 years ago, but you know, it's a long time ago. Uh, so uh, yeah, I, I didn't have a career in aviation. It was a hobby, but uh, one that I really dearly enjoyed. And uh, I know it plays a very important part, just having that airport as close, us being as close to that airport as the airport to us, uh, to our economic development and um, our future sustainability. Uh, I can't say enough about how glad I am to see how well you've come back from the pandemic and, and just all of the things that you've been doing over there. The growth is phenomenal. Uh, and uh, I'm really excited. I like to travel, so I'm really excited about some of the things that you know, coming down the road and how much you've done already. So um, what one question I have, and this, this is coming from definitely from a community aspect of uh, sponsorship, because you've mentioned several times now, please reach out to us if you have ideas for how we can get involved here in the community and raise your awareness here. Uh, how do we do that? Do we go directly to one of you or 
Yeah. You have I'm in great contact with Jennifer uh, from your economic development team very okay. regularly. I see her online. Hi, Jennifer. Okay. Um, she has all of my contact info. You're also welcome. All right, because I think that's that's really critical for the community to see that we have that relationship and uh, build it and build their awareness of all the things you're doing because it's fantastic. So I'll leave it at that. Thank you very much. Thank you. I can just say one quick thing, Deputy Mayor. Include. Really appreciate the the time and the interest, and uh, we get to do a lot of these. Um, but we have not the airport hasn't been doing this for about five years. Of course, COVID played a lot into that. So. We're always open for conversation. We'd love to invite you to come out. Thank you, Councilman Cook, for coming out. We'd love to have council host a council meeting at the airport and then go a tour. We'll do that and, and actually go for a tour and we'll drive a hydrogen car or hydrogen SUV, et cetera. Anything we do to work collaborative together, it's really about how do we help each other? Because it, it really is symbiotic. We, we, we both help each other drive what's best for our communities. And that's, we look at Pomona as one of our communities. It's a really important community because a lot of folks live here. So anything we do to help drive what you're trying to achieve, we can we can happily do together. We're very we're excited to do that and really appreciate your support at the EMRB as well. It's been very helpful for us and Edmonton Global and others to help drive economic development because in the global stage, this region is not knowing. We're known in pockets. On a global stage, we're competing with you know cities. And I have an example of my youngest son lives in Tokyo. There's 37 million people living there. Everybody knows where Tokyo is. They have a population of Canada almost in one city. So this whole region fits into a subdivision in the city of Tokyo, right? We put it in perspective. So collab working regionally collaboratively is really important. I appreciate the role that you guys have all taken and the mayor's taken as well, and council and your administration as well. So thank you. Perfect. I'll, I'll just add a, an ending comment here. Uh, first of all, you learn something every day. So I'm glad you gave up your uh, plate career to join <laughs> council. Um, but uh, second <laughs> second to that, I, I just wanted to add a couple of comments because uh, sometimes I feel like uh, it's a lost thought in terms of the employment opportunities that come with the airport. I, I, I also know quite a few professionals uh, within the industry, whether it's air traffic controller or fire. Um, but what about some of the opportunities for, for more students and, and the younger generation? that's that that's uh, high in uh, concentration here in Beaumont uh, what kind of opportunities exist um, through your group sure so student wise we have right now 23 23 students uh, working for us this uh, coming up spring we'll have partnership with bringing 15 indigenous students into the program we also have a program partnered together with and I can't speak this as well as Caitlin can but it's elevated aviation which is run by Kendra Kincaid out of NAV Canada it was NAV Canada to help folks that don't have access to aviation get access into different aviation programs. And so actually happy to have you reach out, Margo as well, reach out and Kent, uh, Caitlin's involved with aviation to help get people, whether it be underprivileged or minorities or people who don't even know about aviation to get opportunities. There are always opportunities we're looking at. Uh, we do post a lot of our, everything's on our flya.com backslash jobs, <laughs> all, the, all the posts we have, but have people reach out, like really just reach out. Cause we may have, there may be an opportunity that we're, coming into and there may be a student that we say, hey, great, we wanna bring someone in and, and give them an experience opportunity for it. Uh, across the across the campus, I'll call it the ecosystem, there are people always hiring. Like it's a continual hiring process. So there's always opportunities available. It might not be what people want right at the time, but we can get into foot in the door and, and getting your, your pass, the little restricted area pass, is like getting a driver's license. Now you have freedom to move around. Perfect. Thanks so much. Uh, again, thank you for the presentation. Thank you for answering all the questions. Uh, it doesn't appear that there's any other questions. Uh, so I uh, thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, moving on to uh, the next item on our agenda, uh, which would be councillor inquiries. Uh, my understanding is that uh, there currently aren't any councillor inquiries, but I do see a mic lighting up here, so I will uh, pass it on to councillor Van Newark. Yeah, thank you, Chair, <clears throat> and apologies to admin for for one off the side of the desk here, but here it comes tonight. So. Um, can administration advise if there's any work underway to create a pathway link on the east side of 50th Street up to the Rev? Um, that's that's the question at hand right now. And secondarily, just um, if not, uh, just some advice for myself on how I would start that conversation or what that looks like. So thank you very much. I'll, I'll submit written. Thank you. Perfect. 
Perfect. Uh, thank you, administration. I'm not sure if there's anything to add to that. Uh, No, we'll just have Councillor Van Newkirk submit that and we'll have that in the minutes for the next meeting. Perfect, much appreciated. Uh, with that being said, uh, are there any other councillor inquiries? No, there doesn't appear to be any. Um, we will move on to the, the next section here, which is our closed session. Uh, so I'm gonna ask for a motion to go into closed session from a member of council. Mayor Danilo. Thanks, Mr. Chair. I move that council move into closed session at 6.07 p.m. pursuant to the Freedom of Information Protection of Privacy Act, Section 29. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Move into our vote. Perfect. Uh, that vote carries unanimously to move into closed session. Perfect. Uh, thank you. Uh, just carrying out of a closed session here, uh, there were no decisions nor business arising out of the closed session. Um, in saying that, uh, that completes our committee of the whole meeting, uh, asking that we adjourn here at 7.03 p.m.